Welcome back, my friends. So today I wanna to do a little bit more testing with the Retro Game 350, the RG350. So what I wanna take a look at real quick is some hardware pushers for both the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy Advance. I got a lot of requests for those, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see how they perform. Specifically with the Super Nintendo, what I wanna look at is special chip games. So I'm gonna select a handful of these games to check out. First one will be Doom. I'm gonna go ahead and put up the FPS counter as well. That way we can get a good idea of the performance. Wow, that sound is really choppy. Wow, so enough of that. Doom is not performing well. We are on the custom firmware, um, 1.4, but yeah, Doom, not very good. So let's check something else out. Uh, Mega Man X2 uses a special chip. Take a look at that. So there you go, Mega Man X2 maintaining 60 FPS, sounds good, looks good, running good, so that is definitely a good thing there. The next one I wanna do um, is Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. This is one that gives a lot of emulation devices a hard time. I'm gonna let the intro play through a little bit, because typically if it's not gonna run, the intro will be choppy. Let's get the FPS up first. So there we go, Super Mario RPG, the intro sequence, it was playing decently well until toward the end, it started to dip down to about 40 FPS. But overall, I think it's a game that will run decently well. 
Um, not too bad there. The sound was on point. Can't really complain with that. Let's take a look at Star Fox real quick. This is another one, a Super FX game that sometimes gives these types of devices problems. little bit of audio popping right there. So there's a little bit of Star Fox. We're maintaining around 30 FPS, a few little audio pops here and there. Everything's fairly fluid and smooth. Definitely one I could see being playable on here, but just wanted to take a look at it. It runs decently well. I haven't manipulated any of the emulator settings. There are other settings you can mess around with, but I haven't done anything to these games, just running on the custom firmware with the stock emulator. So there's that. One more game. On Super Nintendo, we'll check out Super Mario World 2. This is one that always gives these little handhelds a run for their money. I don't think I've seen this game run on any of these types of devices very well. So far, it's starting pretty good because normally you get a not a bad choppiness in the beginning here. One thing I am noticing is a little bit on the top screen, it's uh, flickering a little bit. It's getting a little distortion up there. That's not normally normal, I would say. But wow, the um, the game's running smooth. We're at a steady 60 FPS. The music and sound is good. Everything is looking legit with this. Very surprising to see this game run. Um, so there you go. If you want to play Super Mario World 2 with a uh, little baby Mario crying all the time, it runs and it runs very well on this device. But let's go ahead and get out of that. So Super Nintendo, as you see, it's it's not 100% by any means. A lot of the FX chip stuff does work decently well. So it's just going to be up to what you accept as acceptable, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple Game Boy Advance games. One that I think is really interesting is this Smashing Drive. This is a very odd game for the Game Boy Advance. Unbelievable to see a game like this on the system. It's definitely a hardware pusher and I thought this one would be great to showcase to you guys running on this device. Game Boy Advance, I really haven't ran into too many issues at all. Very surprising. I've had more issues with Super Nintendo than Game Boy Advance. But wait till you see this game. This one is definitely one worth checking out. Unbelievable to see a game like this with this 3D you know, music soundtrack with singing and it's crazy.
Oh shit. So there's Smashing Drive. I don't want to play too long. It is a great little game. Very odd one for sure. Um, maintaining the FPS sounds good, looks good. Let's check out Mario Kart real quick. This is one that a lot of people had asked to see uh, as this does struggle on some devices of this nature. Well, as you see, I'm kind of sucking at this game because I am looking at these games at an angle while I'm recording. No excuses, man up, right? But I just wanted to give you guys a good idea of what to expect. Game Boy Advance performing beautifully, in my opinion. Super Nintendo, hit and miss. Um, you know, we're never going to get, with these cheaper handheld Chinese devices, 100% accuracy on the emulation. It's just not going to happen. With this unit being around $80, it does do a heck of a lot better job than a lot of the other devices out there that are in a similar category. The LDK game, the previous retro games, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of people love these things, myself included. So I like sharing this stuff with you guys. I really enjoy this device. It does have its shortcomings. I know a lot of people had asked about the, the analog stick on the side. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't bother me too much, but you can hit it with your thumb when you're hitting the B button. Um, the placement of the D-pad should have been up here. Uh, instead of the way it is, but it doesn't bother me too much. So it's really going to be up to personal preference. I do wish this was up here, swapped around. Uh, and yeah, the analog can hit your thumb a little bit. It, it can be an annoyance for some, but it is an excellent device regardless. Tons of options out there. If you're looking for handheld gaming, like Game Boy stuff, Game Boy Advance, hey, keep an eye on that analog pocket. I'm going to be following that project, FPGA-based handheld gaming. I think that's going to open up a world of awesomeness, uh, especially with being able to port different cores over. That thing may be a beast with playing Super Nintendo, all the stuff that we want to do with this besides like PlayStation and stuff like that, but all your 8 and 16-bit games, I think that uh, analog pocket's going to be pretty sweet. So we're going to keep tabs on that and share whatever we can when we can, when we find stuff out about that with you guys. But hey, hope you guys appreciated taking a little extra look Add some testing on the retro game 350. Really do appreciate you guys. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Thumb butt. And boom. Bye.